that special agents attempted to serve arrest and search warrants at a house this morning. Now, President Biden is scheduled to visit Utah this week, and we'll have more details from our North America correspondent, Nomia Iqbal, who's following this for us. But a sealed criminal complaint shows that Craig Robertson was under investigation for making threats against President Biden. According to documents, uh, FBI agents conducting surveillance on his home in March approached him to talk about a social media post. They were told by him to return with a warrant. And the complaint also shows online posts suggesting that Robertson intended to kill Mr. Biden with the suspect allegedly writing he was, quote, cleaning the dust off of his M24 sniper. And this was, again, just ahead of the president's visit to Utah. So I want to bring back our panel, Tom and Victoria. And Victoria, obviously, this is not a story that we were expecting to come across at all, but, but very troubling. No, and it, it just goes to show you, you know, that we have these ongoing threats, uh, but I think it also shows you the excellence of our Secret Service and our law enforcement who track these things very carefully. Obviously, the president's security is a top priority, uh, regardless of, of their party. And, you know, we, we have a, a, a troubling history, I mean, on both sides of the Atlantic of political assassinations. We, we've got to put in extraordinary measures to protect the president and his family at entirely appropriately. And I'm very glad this person is not able to put, pose a threat to President Biden. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Tom, coming to you now, again, this news is just coming in and that information is, well, it represents the details that we have at this point, but it shows that this person was apparently under investigation for making threats against the pre president and that FBI agents who conducted surveillance on his home really were worried about his intent to kill uh, Mr. Biden? Um, I mean, I, I don't know what to say, really. I, I've, in the last seven years, which in the time that I've been covering politics, I've watched it become so much more vicious mm. than it ever has before. I have covered the assassinations of two members of parliament in the United Kingdom. I've been to their funerals, effectively their sort of de facto funerals in the House of Commons. Um, we, I don't know how we really get back from the brink. It is bleak. But who knows what this person had in mind? And it's not really appropriate to comment at this very rarefied moment. But the violence in politics has gone off the charts in, in, in the last, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. And I have no idea how you, how, you get, how, you, how, you, how you dial it back again. But you have to commend the action that's been taken and hope that things will improve. Victoria, do you agree that this is part of a larger trend that we're seeing uh, in politics at the moment? No, I have to push back on that. I mean, if you think back to the 1960s, we lost a president. We lost his brother, a major candidate for the presidency. We had two attempts on President Ford's life and a very serious attempt on President Reagan's life. So I can't, can't imagine this is something that just cropped up over the last seven years, you know, from our experience. But it's something to take extremely seriously. And, you know, as I said, I'm glad our, you know, FBI and Secret Service are on the job, uh, keeping the president and his family safe. Well, again, you know, we are still learning details about this, but Victoria, you are saying that essentially you think this is an isolated incident, not representative of something larger happening. I, well, I don't. I mean, you can go back to Julius Caesar. Uh, you know, violence in politics is hardly anything new. I deplore it as Tom does. I think it's, it, it, it's something we need to keep after and root out. And I think this is a demonstration of having more sophisticated tactics that allow you to do that. And mm. I am I am very happy this didn't get to the the you know the the degree of an actual attack on the president. And I think that's that's a good thing. Yeah, well, as I said, you know, we're, our correspondent, Nomi Iqbal, is going to be looking into this story. Hopefully we can bring more updates to you uh, in a moment. But, Tom, how do you think, as you said, you described uh, violence in politics here in the U.K., how has that impacted how politics are, play out here in the U.K.? Um, look, I mean, I don't know how to really use this uh, guy, a man who's been killed by police officers in Utah as a sort of jumping off point to talk about the difficulties of British politics. Yeah. But there is no doubt that um, things have become more polarized and, and we are not so used to um, the murder of politicians in this country, thankfully. Um, so, it is, so it is correct for me to say that things have got much, much worse in this country in the last seven years when two MPs have been killed, which is an extremely rare occurrence. Um, I accept that the US very sad, sadly has a far worse history on that front. But I do think that America is divided, and I do think what's happening is evidence of that. And I think there has mm. to, there has to, things have to.
join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.